Hello friends, this video on reproduction in animals part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction Modes of reproduction Sexual reproduction where we will talk about male reproductive organs, female reproductive organs, fertilization, embryo development Asexual reproduction where we are going to talk about binary fission and budding. So here we are going to see how different animals reproduce. Now we see a huge variety of living organisms around us. You talk about insects, animals, plants. So and have you ever observed that an elephant will always give birth to a baby elephant. An elephant will not give birth to a fish. Similarly, a fish will not give birth to a cat. So each of these organisms, they give birth to their young ones and they look similar to their parents. I mean, at least the basic features look similar to their parents. So how these new organisms are being formed? So that process is reproduction. So it is basically the process by which living organisms give birth to their young ones. And this process continues. Now, because of reproduction, we actually do not have a time where a particular group of organisms end. I mean, the organisms keep on continuing generation after generation. For example, if you consider some hundred or hundred years ago, so maybe that time our ancestors were alive. We were not yet still born that time. But then again, after a couple of years, uh, maybe our grandparents were born again after a couple of years our parents were born and then we are born so it, it's like living organisms take birth they live their life wherein they grow from a small little child to an adult and then he grows old and then again he dies and again the same cycle continues. So generation after generation, the same kind of living organisms are being produced by the process of the reproduction. So here in this lesson, what we will see is how these organisms reproduce. We will look at the process of reproduction, how that it process exactly takes place, which give birth to young ones. Now, on the screen, you can see a lot of variety of animals, starting from the tiny micro, starting from the tiny microorganisms here, to insects like butterfly, housefly, or caterpillar, to huge organisms like elephants or maybe whale, sharks present in the oceans, plants animals, human beings, so a lot of variety of organisms are there on the screen. Now all of them do not reproduce exactly in the same way but the basic concept of reproduction remains the same. So here in this lesson we are not going to talk about the process of reproduction in each of these animals individually but we will in general talk about how reproduction happens and to make the understanding simple we will mostly take examples of human beings because that helps you to understand stuffs in easier way. Now let us start from the basics what is reproduction? Re means, now wherever you have the re, re means something which happens again. For example, you often say that rewrite it, that means write it again. Repeat it, that means say it again. Rewind it, that means wind it again, so take it back. So the word re often means again. So reproduction, production means to produce something, to formation of something. So reproduction means to produce the same organism again. So I mean literally this is what the word means. And what is the process? It is the process by which living organisms produce new organisms similar to themselves. That is important. Now since we are going to produce similar type of organisms over and again, so it is called a reproduction. Now here you can see that an elephant will always produce a baby elephant. So they will look similar to themselves. Again, if you talk about human beings, human beings will always give birth to human beings. Now, you might ask that, but that doesn't mean that the baby is, baby will exactly resemble the parents. 
for example, it, it doesn't happen that the baby resembles exactly the mother or exactly the father. Yes, of course, that doesn't happen. But when we say similar, we do not, we are not saying in the definition that it will produce organisms exactly identical. They are not exactly identical. They are just similar. So when I say similar, that means if you look at a human baby, the baby is going to have two ears, two eyes, one nose, one mouth, I mean, the similar kind of body structure. So the basic similarities are there. That doesn't mean that they are going to be exactly identical. There will be differences as well. And that is why we are always able to distinguish one person from another. Because no two person looks exactly identical except for twins. You talk about rabbits, talk about fishes, and all of them give birth to organisms similar to themselves. And this process is reproduction. Now the question is why is reproduction necessary? What would happen if there is no reproduction? If organisms are not giving birth to their young ones, what is going to happen? Because you might ask that reproduction is not necessary for the survival of a living organism. And for example, if you take example of human beings, if we, if our body does not perform the process of digestion, we will we might die because the food is not getting digested, so the body is not getting energy. So we will die over a period of time. But if our body is not carrying out reproduction, we can still survive. So reproduction is not necessary for the survival of a particular living organism, but it is required for the survival of the entire species. So if we want to retain a particular species, then reproduction has to happen. For, that is what I mean to say is if all human beings, they stop reproducing, if no more human babies are born, what will happen? All those human beings we are, which are existing today, they are not going to exist forever because there is this vicious cycle of birth and death. So birth, growth, and then death. So this cycle will continue, right? So for this cycle to continue, birth has to happen. Now if I say that human beings are not reproducing, so what will happen? There will be no birth. So whichever, whichever number of human beings are existing today, they all will die someday. Maybe after 100 years from now or maybe after 200 years from now, all the human beings will die. So that time there will be no human beings, that means the entire species of human beings will be gone. So if we want to retain the species, then reproduction has to take place. Because without reproduction, the entire species would become extinct. The next importance is transmission of characters from one generation to the next generation. Now, you would have often observed that many of you look similar to your father. Many of you look similar to your mother. Many of you even look similar to your grandfather. Now, why do you get these similarities? Now, these similarities are due to transmission of characters from one generation to next generation. And how this transmission happens? This transmission happens as a part of the process of reproduction. During reproduction, what happens is there are certain cells which carry that particular genes. You remember in, in the last lesson, we talked about genes. What are genes? Genes are nothing but they are the units of inheritance. They contain DNA, DNA and DNA is the genetic material. So the characters get transmitted from one generation to another through DNA. And how the DNA gets exchanged from one person to another or how is it gets transferred during reproduction. For example, in case of human beings, a baby is born and the baby remains inside the mother's body for quite some time, for around nine months, wherein it develops from a small egg to a little baby and only after that it is delivered outside. Now during this process, I mean even when the egg itself is formed, that egg contains certain genes or certain genes which has inherited from its father, certain genes from its mother and therefore it has got traits of both the parents. In fact, it also will have some new traits as well. So this transmission of characters is possible due to reproduction because if there is no reproduction then there will be no concept of uh, children looking similar to their parents. So this inheritance is also because of reproduction.
variations lead to origin of new species. Now, just now I said that we all look similar. We have certain similarities to our parents, but at the same time, we also have some new traits which were not present in our parents. For example, in this picture, you can see a couple with their two kids. Now, if you look at these two kids, one of these kids, this kid, he has got blue eye. So his eye color is blue. But if you look at both of his parents, none of them have got blue eyes. So blue eye color is a trait which is new to this guy. So it was not present in his parents or grandparents, but he got it. So these kind of changes, these kind of new traits which are seen in the offsprings, they are called variations. And these variations over a long period of time can even give rise to new species because small, small changes can altogether give rise to a new organism altogether. And that is where we talk about origin or evolution of new species. So that way small, small changes or some new traits or characters over a due course of time can give rise to new species. And if the more number of species we have, the better it is. Right? Because we will have more diversity. So, this inheritance or variation, they are all possibility because reproduction happens. If there is no reproduction, there will be no inheritance, there will be no variation. So, when you talk about variation, you can just look at this example. Where you see so many dogs of different varieties. Now, they are all dogs, but they have so many differences. So, the appearance, the fur type of color, the shape, size, size of the ears. So if you look at each of them, they look so different from each other. So these variations are also because of these kind of small, small changes. So small changes, one at a time, over a period of time, when multiple changes come together, so you get a new species altogether, a new animal altogether. So that is why in dogs, you have so many different varieties of dog and that is how they all started existing. Now, how exactly inheritance happens or how exactly variation happens, we will talk about all that in genetics. So, you will study genetics in your class 12. So, there you will understand how exactly the uh, genes get transferred from one generation to the next generation. So, I think for now it is clear that reproduction, even though it is not required for the survival of an organism, but it is extremely important for the survival of the entire species over a long period of time. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.